Welcome to this week's episode of Azentuary. We left off last time with the entire crew, um, how can we put this? Finding an interesting painting and jumping in. So, we begin with a whitewash of extreme bright light. And then it fades as your eyes come into focus. You're in a room, but not in a room. It appears to go on infinitely in all directions. You appear to be sitting on chairs, though they don't quite feel sturdy as you rock back and forth. They seem to be like rocking chairs in all directions, though as you look at each other's chairs, they're solid-ish wood. And at the center, you guys are all sitting like four in a semicircle. And in the center is a backwards chair with a guy sitting on it, you know, cool teacher style, legs spread. There appear to be a couple of horns coming out of his helmet, and he's wearing a dress, kind of a something light and fluffy. And he looks at you all and goes, Well, I always knew you were a bunch of idiots, but are you kidding me? All right. So here's the deal. Everyone here? Everyone, everyone paying attention? All right. No. No? Well, listen up. Look, my name's Loki, and I'm going to be directing your death. Congratulations, you're all dead. So, Aww. instead of, uh, I think there has yeah. To be, I, I think there has to be some kind of mistake. There's no way someone as important as me can die this prematurely. I mean, I haven't taken over the world yet. So, uh, you need to check your list again, because I'm pretty sure that, um, Grimmel ain't dying today. Uh-huh. Yeah, there is no list. There is just simply the fact that uh, you guys were all on your way to your own destinations, and I stepped in to bring you here. Welcome to the Astral Plane. Ugh. Must be some mistake. I die in service to Freya. I should be in Freya's house, not here. Yeah, let me tell you about that. So... I, I was gonna kind of play a, a trick on Freya and pretend to be her. She got kind of mad at me and told me I now have to watch out for you or she's gonna hit me repeatedly. And I figure you all dying as a group is probably gonna make her hit me a lot. So instead, we're just gonna make a little side tour here and have a little chat. Uh, like I said, Astral Plane, we can hang out here for like a thousand years and a day will pass back where you used to be on the material realm. So, uh, let's take some time. Oh god, is this a help wanna. group? I don't want to be in a help group. <laughs> oh no, this isn't your Megalomaniacs Anonymous. Oh. Wait, how do you know about my Megalomaniacs Anonymous? <laughs> uh, do you, see, do, you, do you not see the horns? I, I'm, I'm literally a god sitting before you. Literally never heard of you, so I don't see your points. Really? Their their points are right there. Look up. Yeah, they're looking kind of dull. Let me out of here, you stupid excuse for a god. Uh, 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 uh Grimmel, uh, it's probably not a wise idea to anger a god. I don't. I'm not buying it. I say he's bluffing. Uh, Apollo <laughs> raises his hand. Uh, yeah, fairy boy. Can I go to the bathroom? Uh, all you have to do is think of it, and it happens. Okay. Uh, does that mean Pop Art pop poofs away to the restroom? More or less, though. You don't have a physical body, so there's no, uh... There's nothing for you to do. That sounds like a you problem. Anyway, I think I should be talking to the leader, uh, Mr. Bearback. Bearbark. Wait, Sorry. He, he, he's the leader. <laughs> yeah, it's actually, you know, first, first name, uh, Barry Bark, uh, last name, Big Log. So, uh, if you're going to address me by my last name, it's, uh, Mr. Big Log. Uh, ah, yes, yes, uh, 
big log. That just... Oh, my God. It's compensating <sighs> for something. Yeah, I'm just going to call you Mr. Tree. Um, so, here's the deal, Mr. Tree. I can send you back. We can kind of do a little reset on things, but even as gods, we have to follow rules. So... We can do this little divine intervention thing. Say you're on a mission, a quest, and when you complete the quest, then you actually move on to the divine realm you're meant to be in. Uh, or you could try and find your own way back, in which case there's no strings attached, but you have to somehow get from here, the astral plane, back all the way to the material realm. Now, I can technically assist a little by calling over one of the color pools, but I don't know where you're going to end up, and I'm. Let's just say I'm not going to recommend that method. Oh, so our other choice is. or death? Well, you can go back and basically be on a mission until death. So, a single mission until death. This not really filling me with a whole lot of. Uh, uh, it's not very positive that. We shall say. Can I try to persuade this wannabe god to help us and let us out anyways? Because screw them rules. <laughs> uh, you can persuade him, or you can try to roll, but you're gonna have to beat like a nearly impossible dice check. <laughs> so, you say you're a god, right? And I mean, obviously, you're quite the troublemaker if you know me from Megalomaniacs Anonymous. So, how about this? I mean, you're a god. You shouldn't have to listen to anybody. I mean, heck, I'm not a god. I feel like a god, but I'm not a god. I don't listen to anybody. So, I feel like, if anything, you should do what is, like, the best for you. And I feel like what you need right now is a good old-fashioned rebel against all the other gods because you're the best god. I mean, I feel like that is just a way to really prove your worth as a god and show that you won't listen. You're not going to listen to what the other people tell you. You don't have to listen to any rules. I say you let us back out of here to where from whence we came just to make a statement. Make a point to all those other gods like, yeah, you guys follow rules. You nerds. You losers following rules. Rule followers. And just let us out because, you know, like only a real god, like a real strong mischievous, all-powerful god would dare to break the rules like that. I got 20! <laughs> With a plus oh 9 god. on persuasion! That's a 29! Okay. <laughs> well, he, he leans forward, he looks at you and goes, alright, here's the deal. You make a good point. <laughs> and I'm... <laughs> I am kind of the god of loopholes. So, we're going to make the quest you're on something ridiculous. And in the language of the, uh, how can we put this? The divine covenant you're going on. You can just take as many side quests as you need to get there. So, uh, how's that work out for a deal? You know what? <clears throat> Sounds like good deal to me. Better deal than uh, we were getting. Yeah, yeah. I like your style. You, you get me. We get each other. I'll hold out my hand to kind of shake it. He kind of looks at you and he just kind of... Uh, you see his arm like stretch out from where he's sitting, gets really long, and then shakes yours, and then pops back, almost like Mr. Fantastic. I like his style. <clears throat> Screw walking, too, you know? <laughs> screw rules, screw walking, you know? So, I guess, does everyone does everyone agree? Yep, uh, yep. Cool. Yep, me sounds, agree. Sounds pretty good. He's like, all right, well, uh, here we go, then. He stands up and walks uh, into what, the middle and... One second, uh, Mr. Loki, sir. Uh... What does main uh, divine inspired quest we were actually supposed to be on? You mean before you died or now? Yes. Uh, now. Oh, now? Uh, let's see. We need something ridiculous. We need you to. 
Oh, let's see. I need you to protect the great worms of the sacred forest from... Let's say the birds of the northern windswept continents. Uh, how is that a divine inspired quest? It's so we can avoid it so we can live forever. If we never do the quest he gives us, then we never have to die. That's the thing. Okay. All right. I guess, I guess, I guess that'll work. It says, oh, and by the way, you still can technically die. Uh, it's just right now I'm giving you a bit of a mulligan. Uh, you're not, it's if you complete the quest, you will for sure die. But you technically could be killed along the way. So, ta-ta! Yeah. And he creates a swirl. It starts just kind of mid-air and then expands outward like a horizontal tornado until it's pulling you in. Oh! I'm gonna get sick! Screw death! <laughs> I'm immortal! And I'll live forever! <laughs> and you go spinning and then are all of a sudden thrown across the room and you, as you land one after another hitting basically flying out of where that old portrait was and hitting the back wall you find yourself back in the old demonic chaos horde so, i was hoping he'd at least get us back to uh you know something above ground all right we would have to find a way out ourselves so our Barry, wasn't it you who decided we go into the painting? Uh, yes, because I thought it might be a portal out of this dungeon. Killed all of us. Yeah, well, it's not my fault. And... Regardless! Like a good idea at the time. I think, you know... I just think... Um, I should be known as Grimmel the Immortal from now on. <laughs> well, you will always be just Grimmel in my eyes. That's not exactly the reaction I was hoping for. <laughs> yes, well, you know, uh, you evil, so I, I don't listen to you. I mean, you seem pretty happy with what I did Would you listen to Grimmel then. the Immortal? Yeah, Grimmel the Immortal. That will be how I am known. All right. Well, Grimmel the Immortal, you, uh, I guess, are at the head of the pack. You're looking back down into this uh, hallway that you landed in. A familiar one. You were just here. Um... Like, is this from back where? OK, OK, right back here. OK. Yeah, gotcha. you're back in, you're like, let's say you're looking east and you see the, the diminishing hallway straight ahead of you and then the hallway that goes to the south that you walked up to get here. Well, where do we go now, then? Uh, me not sure. Me not sure where exit is in this place. Uh, me going to go try, uh, me going to go look at Shrinking Tunnel again. Okay. You go walking in it, and it gets smaller as you go down it. Uh, yes. Uh, me going to try to uh, get as small as me can and see if maybe there's some kind of a, is there any kind of like a mural or painting at the end of hallway that me can see? No, it just keeps getting smaller and smaller. You don't see anything. A vanishing point perspective. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. 
then I guess me go back. Um. Uh, me, there's a. Uh, let me go back down, and there's a door that goes west, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, did we check what was behind that door? Yes, you walked into that room. You found there was a uh, enchanted pool on the opposite side of the room from the door, and in the on the south wall in kind of the southwest corner there's the statue what well, looks like a stone statue of an ancient lich holding a, a staff with some runes on it okay uh grimmel can you read runes on staff oh i can try wow go and use my invocation eyes of the rune keeper okay. uh you say, I know how to keep runes, and these runes are totally out of order. How unkept. Oh. Uh, Grimmel, can you tell how these runes are supposed to be in order, then? I don't know. I mean, I never took poetry class, or whatever class well, it is that teaches you that kind of skill. Well, tell me, tell me which rune you think needs to go first. Um... I'm gonna roll like a history check. Maybe you could see if it was part of your schooling. All right. Either In eleven. Uh, you look at it and you're like, I think it's this one. Uh, me push that rune. Uh, as you you push that rune, you kind of get a faint glow to come out of the rune itself. Okay. Uh, Grimmel, what do you think next one is? Ah! Uh, another history check. Yep. Uh, 16. Ah, well, it's not just that. You press this one, then this one. I know for sure. Alright. Me then press this one, and then that one. All right. As you do that, the glowing gets really bright, and then you hear a clunk sound. And it looks like the statue kind of swings out just a hair. Oh, uh, me tug on statue. See if me can swing it out further. Yep. It slides right over, turns 90 degrees facing to the east and reveals a corridor behind it. All right. Uh, me take that corridor. All right. It is windy. It takes you up and down, mostly go though to the west as you go back and forth. Eventually, you come across a long hallway, and midway down there appears to be another statue, but this one is toppled, blocking your path. It'll be rough terrain to try and climb over it. Okay, is there anything uh, behind statue that is toppled over, like where it was standing? Uh, you don't see anything. Huh, okay. Alright, well, uh, me, uh, can me see over statue? Uh, yes, you can. There's another, oh, 30 feet of hallway, and then it turns to the south. Okay, uh, but there's nothing on the other side of the statue that might uh, attack us as we're trying to get over. You don't see anything. Oh, I love when you say it like that. <laughs> is Watcher Buddy still with us? No, he is not. He appears to have fully liquefied when you died. Oh. Aww. Aww. I kind of like Water Buddy. <laughs> hmm. They 
there were two drains, one on each side of the corridor, and he split. Oh my goodness. Funny. <laughs> uh... What to me wouldn't give for a hammer right now. I'm just gonna fly over. <laughs> And not land on the ground yet, because I don't trust anything. Okay. Yeah, you take flight, and you cross over the top of the fallen statue. You carefully navigate through the middle of the area, and nothing happens. Alright, uh... Is there pieces of statue kind of littering ground? There does. Uh, sure, why not? If you get within, say, five feet, there's the broken off, say, hands. All right. Uh, me, me take up hand and uh, kind of toss it over statue, you know, down hallway just to see what happens. All right. You give it a toss and you don't see anything happen. Okay, well then, in that case, uh, me attempt to crawl over top of statue. All right. You climb up over the top of the statue, coming down on the other side. You don't notice anything, so you take a step towards the corner, and then suddenly you feel yourself difficult to move. Uh, like you're uh -oh. slowing down. That's not good. Where is everyone else? Uh, I imagine they're still on other side of statue. I mean, I flew over, so. <laughs> Poplarch can probably fly over. Good. He's just kind of watching and observing right now to see, uh, yeah, make sure the coast is clear. There's no booby traps or anything. Ah, you said booby. <laughs> Uh, That's you, right. Mom always called me. <laughs> you bird. What well, do you know of boobies? There's a bird. I mean, they exist. Boob I'm not racist. <laughs> you know how many birds out there are named Booby or Tit or something oh, like I know. that? Exactly. I had a cousin who was a blue, like a blue-footed booby type bird. He's kind of the outcast. Um, we don't like him. He's always making really? jokes like, "Oh, look at my boobies." <laughs> He sucks. Are they known for laying traps everywhere? No, uh, but you get 12 of them together and it's real weird. Or at least maybe they just sound weird, doesn't it? Wah, wah. Uh, whatever, he, he sucks. He's not allowed to found a family <laughs> gatherings when children are around. <laughs> All right. Let's have Barry, why don't you go ahead and make a constitution saving throw? Alright. Uh, me get 21. Yeah, you're you're fine. Okay. Is me still slowing down? You you felt yourself slowing and you powered your way through it, continuing oh, to good. walk. To everyone else, it looks like nothing happened. You were just being cautious. Okay. Well, I mean, I don't know if Foxglove has gone over top of statue yet. No. But, uh, is, and Poplart has not moved yet. Is it, Has he, or is he still on the other side of statue? No. He, he's still on the other side as well. Okay. Watching. Uh, there's, there's, uh, Poplart, if I were you, I would just keep flying. I wouldn't actually, you know, stop, you know, step on this hallway. Uh, there is something here that, uh, uh, didn't feel good for a second. Okie dokie. Papa just casually flies over. Uh, Foxglove, can you possibly maybe, like, uh, jump into my arms and I will carry you past Danger Zone? No. <laughs> danger Zone? I'd rather take on the Danger Zone than hop into your arms. Well, alright. Hop away, then. Or, you know, step into the danger zone. Danger zone. <laughs> All right. Well, you see, he steps in and makes a constitution saving throw. 
gonna pick a rabbit and do the ah, no copyright. <laughs> Take the hallway to the danger zone. Is that better? There you go. Right, We're not playing the music. You're just doing an homage. You're singing it. Yeah. And it was for less than way. 30 seconds. Okay. You you are also okay. Ha. Huh. All right. Well, glad that we were able to get past that. Just, let's just continue on. I'm going to continue right. flying because I feel higher than everybody else right now because I literally just cheated death. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you fly to the south and then turn to the east. And there is... Make sure I get this right. Oops, passed it on my notes. Uh, there is a iron door ahead of you. Yeah, and as you go up to it, you find that it is locked. Oh, lame. Who locks doors anymore? Oh, additionally, as you are there and you try to shake it, you're up so high and you all of a sudden feel an, a draft and you're, you're being almost like vacuumed up into a shaft that's above the door. That's not good. Uh, do I roll to get out of it? Uh, yeah, let's do a uh, acrobatics check. See if you can do like a fun aerial move. That was a three. Uh, you go to dive and instead of like bringing your wings in to do one of those cool peregrine falcon type moves, you somehow poof out, forgetting that you're as an owl, you're more like Kirby. So like a balloon, you just go straight up into this thing and get stuck like Augustus. Wait. Hey. I think this pipe is calling me fat. You're fat. I shouldn't be stuck. <laughs> you just poofed up and it narrowed. The pipe was actually narrowing. So uh, it's like the opposite of the pipe in Tank Girl. You know, the one that went down getting slightly narrower the whole way. This one goes up getting slightly narrower. Okay, uh, can we still see Grimmel's feet sticking out? Yeah, yes, you see the feet wiggling there. I know. Uh, you can't quite, you can't see the head, you see the poofed out feathers. Can me still reach Grimmel's feet? Uh, let's do a athletics check to see if you can jump it. Oh, so high ceiling then, huh? Very high, like it, it went up this shaft. Um, uh, dirty 20. Uh, yeah, you're able to, like, grab a toe, and your whole body weight pulling down dislodges Grimmel, and the two of you come falling straight to the floor. Grimmel on top of you. <laughs> Grimmel, are you pretty heavy for a uh, little bird? No, I'm not heavy. I'm a perfectly suitable weight for Alkin. Well, for a perfectly suitable weight, you kind of knocked wind out of me. Well, maybe he's a to walk knock the wind out of. Uh, me wearing armor. So you're just really low on your limits right now. That's it. All right. Anyway. Can't uh, get oh, much air in in the first to... place. Oh, come on, Grimmel. Barry's just trying to tell you that you're breathtaking. Uh, no, that's not what I'm saying at all. Yeah. Uh, Grimmel, you're 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 a nice guy and all, but um, I'm not really into nice guys. You, you mean Poplart? Well, no, I'm. He's saying that like you're saying that I'm breathtaking. Oh. But like, uh, you, you kind of disgust me in several ways with your goodness. So, um, it's gonna be a no. <laughs> oh, we weren't asking you out on date, there, Grimmel. Well, you say I'm breathtaking. I mean, like that's that's pretty suggestive. I mean. <laughs> All right, anyway, Puffle Arts, can you pick lock on this door? I just had a vision of you guys performing, like, the worst rendition of Cyrano de Bergiac ever. <laughs> no, that tracks. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Trying to see... Do we just assume Poplar can... 
pop these locks. Well, I mean, generally we do a sleight of hand. What? It's like a plus, ridiculous plus for you. I have a plus twelve, and it's a designated skill, so it's impossible for me to lo roll lower than ten. Oh well, then yes, you can just pop it. <laughs> okay. But otherwise, it's a twenty-three. All right. Yeah, you pop it open. It's not a problem. All right. Uh, me open door. All right. You throw it open to a long room that... I can't remember. I think you guys have been here before. I seem to recall that. Maybe mistaken. I missed putting a note about it. In any case, it's a long room with the floor covered in square tiles. Uh, yeah, you have been here. Okay, there it is. I was reading the wrong room is why. Uh, this is, yes, you've been in this room before. It's a long room with square tiles on the floor, and there's a magical mirror on the east wall. You recognize it as uh, one that gave you a bunch of weird prophecies before. Okay. And you hear it. Ooh, you're back for more? Uh, no, we just want uh, we just want to find a way out of this crazy place. Oh, would you like a prophecy about that? Uh, no, no, just uh, directions out of this crazy place would be appreciated. Oh. Hmm. Well, sometimes up is down, left is right, and we have to go forwards to go back. Have you ever been anywhere? Because you're a mirror. I feel like you shouldn't know how directions work in the first place, so I'm going to take that advice with a grain of salt. <laughs> Very salty salt. <laughs> hmm. Not sure what that is, but I have seen people throw it over their shoulder. Um, how long have you been in this room, Mirror? Hmm. That is a good question. It was when the mountains moved. The unliving walked again, and it caused the peasants to take up arms and trigger the rise of hope. Uh, how many people, how many, uh, people have you seen since then and been able to give prophecies to? Ooh. I don't know. Time is a little weird for me. At least once per mirror-like hour, as the Burning Harbor persuades the beast to walk and activate the rise of Empire. Wow. Uh Uh, do you uh, tell you that would you like to be given to someone or something in like a busier part of the world where you can be giving prophecies all the time Ooh, that would be wonderful like the barons of the keep they they meet and cause the rise of lawlessness yes okay how about if we carry you with us, can you actually give us good directions out of here? Mm. And then once we get back to, you know, where we're supposed to be, we can give you to some wizard or something? Mm. Yes. Like milk turning to ink, a screaming plague illuminates the way and sows great misfortune. Uh, is it possible for you to, uh, speak plainly? I mean, tell you what, let me ask you this. What is two plus two? Hmm. I, I can't do math. All right. I mean, that was a plain answer. Yeah. How about this? Uh, I'm going to recite a couple of letters of the alphabet. A, B... See what comes next. Uh, 
The brightest sunrise. Blindness cured will unleash suffering and an eternal night. That seems about on par for me. Yeah, you're not really convincing me that you are of it can be of any help. But, but. All right. Then, I will well, give you. I will give you a chance. I will take you with me, and uh, if you cannot give us plain directions that we can follow, I will leave you right there. Oh, Barry, come on. She can't help it. Well, we cannot decipher her riddles. We are not smart enough. She needs to dumb it down for us and make it plain. Plain as fruits. While they bleed, a duel shall mark the age of shadow and support the return of power. Something tells me I'm going to regret this. Uh, so anyway, me, uh, me try to uh, take mirror off of wall. Oh yeah, it, it comes right off. It was just hanging there. Okay, all right. So me, uh, me tuck mirror under one arm and like, all right, mirror, which way do we go? Hmm. As the rivers boil, two brothers forge a union and life without hunger to the south. South it is, I guess. All right, we head south. All right. You find there is the doorway that you passed through last time you were here, which leads into a hall. Am I the only one that wonders why we're so good at cardinal directions while buried in a cave underground in the hells? Uh, Poplart, we're on a roll right now. Don't mess it up. Oh, sweet rolls. <laughs> Good idea. We're just shorthanding is the, the simple hand wavy answer to that. <laughs> uh, things are going good, so, <laughs> so Poplart has to throw a monkey wrench in the works. Of course. All right, so you go all the way down. To where there's the T in the road. You recognize this T. To the north is where uh, Foxglove got, I think it was an eye, a jeweled eye you pulled out of a horse. And to the south is the way you came in. Okay, well, I guess we go south. All right. You go down to the south and then turn to the east. There is a doorway of sure marmalade. Uh, it is a bone door that you had slammed shut and latched from this side as you ran through on your way in. Uh, do we remember why we slammed it shut? No idea. I think death kind of rattled my memory. I don't remember any of this. <laughs> is this the one that you actually... Uh... No, I don't think this was the guy that you convinced to join our, your evil army. Hmm. Well, uh, me decide to open Bone Door and uh, peek in. Alright. As you peek inside... You see some kind of short, spined looking, like, devilly creatures with, you know, wings. They're relatively small, like, kind of poplar sized, but definitely evil looking. And the three of them seem to be around a creature that is, like, chained to the floor. Okay. Uh, what does creature chained to floor look like? Mm. Humanoid, uh, about your size, but just 
absolutely covered in chains. Red flesh, ripped, uh, you know, very muscular. But yeah, just covered in chains all over. Around the the ankles, the mid-torso, the face even. Wow, okay, this must be a serious bad person. Yeah. And the, uh, the spiny guys are kind of dancing around him, kind of prodding him. Okay. Those are those were the spiny guys, huh? Yes, they're like like poplart but spiny. They look really ugly. Hey. Not you, poplart, the spiny guys. Oh. No, you you pretty cute and you smell like brownies, so. That I do. Barry's just flirting a lot today. I mean, he called me breathtaking. He called Poplar. No, Poplar called you breathtaking. No, you. Poplar said that you were calling me breathtaking. Yes. Oh. Yes. All right. Anyway. You're getting weird. Sorry. Well, it's this place. Yeah, we he's just out lonely. Where... Well, yeah, maybe. We, we, we need to get out to where sunshine and fresh air are. All right. All right. Well, uh, what does what is on? Are there other doors leading out of this room? You can see, yes, one to the south. You you apparently ran through this room before. Okay. Yeah, I don't remember this room at all. <laughs> All right, well, uh, I guess we'll have to fight our way through spiny things. Or we can sneak. Uh, look at me. Do I look like I'm capable of sneaking? You won't know unless you try. <laughs> well, if you sneak, the worst that happens is you just kill them after they discover you. Fox Club. Maybe you could cast uh, that uh, Thunder Wave spell you always want to try on them. Knock them down. And then maybe we, then we can finish them off. Uh, is that right? Yes. That's why he asked. Uh... Alright. I guess I'll, well, like, I have to go out there, and, because it emits from me. I have to go well, out yeah, So you will... just run out there and no, cast... No, she doesn't even have to run out there. We will just kind of get behind her. She opens door a little bit, cast spell. No, it comes from herself. It's a radius around herself. Oh, it doesn't... It she doesn't... would have to run into the room. I would. Oh. All right. Uh... I'm saying you Wait. still do it. It'll knock them I, down, I, or at least injure them anyways, before they can do anything. I, uh, were you going to say I something, Poplart? Yes, Poplart. I have an idea. Can I try something? Sure. We will let you try something. All right. Just um, wait here for a moment. Okay. And uh, Poplart shrinks down to half his size and tries to stealthily sneak into the middle of the group. Oh, um, no. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. Da -da. Mm -hmm. Like sim silently humming to himself. Mm -hmm. All right. So as you're doing that, I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. <laughs> wisdom saving throw? <laughs> oh, no. Uh, that's a nine. <laughs> you get about halfway in, and then you nope yourself right out. You just run back as far as as fast as you can and hide behind Barry. Change my mind. Change my mind. Uh, never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Okay. Well, that was useful. <laughs> uh, yeah. Can you, uh, uh, Grimmel? Can you possibly uh, arms of a dar this? Well, yeah, that would be the same extent as her Thunder Wave. If she wants to try Thunder Wave, she can go for it. 
Because like, somebody arms. doesn't appreciate. You do the same thing, basically. It's another radius spell. I just run to the room and do it. I don't mind doing it, but if she wants to use her radius, her thunder wave, that was the time. I never to. Barry told me to. All right, fine. We we do this hard way. No, no, I can do it. I'll s sigh and open the door and just kind of waltz into the center and cast arms of Hadar. <laughs> Well, as you get halfway to the center before you can cast it, I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. Ah, uh, that is... Oh, I actually have good wisdom. That's a 20-something or other. <laughs> well, okay, then you're fine. 23. So, yeah, you, <laughs> you wobble right into that room and cast away. Alright, to cast... Oh, it's gonna do so much damage, though. <sighs> I feel like this is overkill. Um. No, I don't need that. Ah, pencil. That's fine. Alright, thank you. That's a 19 to cast. You got it. Okay. Was it already? Duty six. Then it's thirty six, forty six, thirty six, sixty six. All right. <laughs> ah, I have to. Ah, I don't have anything near me to do it digitally. One sec. You said uh, 66? 15. Uh, 26. Okay, so you waltz in and these those three spiny guys go to like attack you, I guess, and the arms just whip through them and send them all flying backwards dead. <clears throat> All right, the coast is clear, guys. <laughs> um, well done, Grimmel. Well done. Yeah, thanks. But now I'm out of spell slots. That's what I meant by overkill. <laughs> uh, well, it worked. <laughs> well, I mean, we just died and came back, so you know, we should be, you know, like reset. I would should we? Well, you were reset. No, you're reset from where. You were at the end of last session when you died. We, lo we loaded our quick save point. Exactly. No, so we still we have all the stats from before we died. Yes. Okay, so no, I, I'm out of spell slots. <laughs> all right. Fine. Hey, look, we already right. cheated death. We can't cheat the game. <laughs> <laughs> what game I'm talking the about, I don't know. It's just a neat thing for me to say. <laughs> the game of life. That was great. Oh my god. So, alright, with that, the guy on the ground, those chains go flying up into the air, whipping around like snakes. And I need everyone to give me an initiative roll. Oh, this people. Well, except for Grimmel, because Grimmel already. Oh, okay. Fox Club got a 19. Poplar? Um, Barry? 30, 20. Get... What'd you say, Poplar? 30, 20. Uh, me also got dirty 20. Awesome. Then I shall give it to the wisdom of Google and see whoever ends up on top on that one. Uh, that was Poplar. Google sounds very wise. Yeah, I'm not sure how they do, do their algorithm to decide who goes uh, what when the numbers are the same, but you know, whatever. Alright, so Grimma walks in and blows everyone back. And because of the element of surprise, Poplart, you look back around and you see all of those creatures gone. But you're looking into the room. What do you do? Well, he's already kind of small. So, uh, seems like as good a time as any to, you know sneakily crawl back onto Barry's shoulder and resume his uh, shoulder cannon 
stance. Try right. and if you're gonna pop off it. If you're, if you're gonna try to make a shot, I need you to make a wisdom saving throw first. Wisdom saving throw. Nat one. You instead of climbing up on Barry's shoulder, you run up the corridor. Yeah, uh, that that seems about right. Yep, you you used your dash action to go as far away as possible. Um, wait a minute. Uh, is this like a charm type of thing? No. Okay. Well then, never mind. Yep, but Barry, it is your turn. All right. Well, me uh, me rip sort of Freya from sheath. All right. And uh, now me will try to attack this thing. All right, you go in to attack. Start with a wisdom saving throw. Um. Eight. You back out of the room are like, maybe next time. As you move yourself up and away, you feel... Just sheer terror. Flood your body. Mm. Ah, you big dummies! Alright, Foxglove. Alright. Well, you need to make a wisdom saving throw anyway for your mask. Yeah, right. me too. Yeah, but you get advantage on the second one. Okay, well, the first one is an 18. So you're good there. And then advantage on the second one is a 15. 15 is that? You're actually fine. So, yeah, you're free to do whatever you want to do. Cool. Um, what to do? Is this, I don't know, is this person a humanoid? Is it a dead? It's not it humanoid. Hum it's, it looks humanish. It's not undead. Okay, okay. Then I might do solo performance again. Okay. I shred that loot. This has become an axe battle. Ah, 18. Okay. okay. I knew I had something. Alright. Uh, yeah, that... Yeah, that, that passes. Uh, so what does this do? Let's see. It is charmed. Oh, he has to succeed. Oh, I have to roll a wisdom saving throw. Sorry, I did I misread the thing. Uh he's a plus one wisdom. Uh I rolled a fourteen, so that's a fifteen on the wisdom save. What's your spell save DC? I don't I don't remember. That's what you write it down. Probably like sixteen or seventeen by now. It should be yeah, our spell casting modifier plus your proficiency plus like a base of eight generally. What's that up to? 19. Then, yeah, you totally have him. He is uh -huh. charmed. Woohoo. Alright, guys, uh, beat him up if you want. But try to do it quickly, because so, when he gets injured, he gets to try to save again. So. Well, we can just move by him now. Beat yeah, him up that's also, also true. But what about all the other bad guys around him? Oh, uh, they're dead. Yeah, I kind of one-shotted them. All oh, right, yeah, yeah, those, yeah. Hmm. Now you guys just need to get wise. Well, um, and so someone's gonna have to like grab Parplight and like blindfold him through the room or something. Well, actually, and I knew I had something. Starting at tenth level, uh, I have the Aura of Courage. 
So me and friendly creatures within 10 feet of me can't be frightened while I am conscious. Oh, nice. Okay. So I just got to go like... grab Poplart. Yeah. All right. So you grab Poplart and drag him through, and he immediately feels like comfortable in your presence. Help me, Barry. <laughs> it it all right, little little fairy man. Uh, he can't That's hurt you what... now. Foxglove has him charmed. I find comfort in your big manly arms. I wish most women did. <laughs> they don't know what they're missing. <laughs> well, alright. I guess you guys just walk on through and you find yourself in the hallway heading south. Okay. Uh, I also have to carry mirror with me as well. Yeah, well, it's it's not particularly heavy. You're carrying it under your arms, and it seems it seems very happy. It's like singing along. You can kind of hear some lyrics. It's like, after sand rain falls, two wise men turn away from each other. Life without hunger. Doop a doop a do. Uh, yes, very, very musical. <laughs> All right, you work your way down to the south, and you find there is a, a, the long hallway off to the east, where you had met a dwarven man long ago, and a the stairway ascending to town. Oh, thank goodness! We head on up. Awesome. All right. Well, you head on up, and as you walk out, you see the skinny, pale Victorian woman dressed in black with a little parasol, and she just kind of gives you a nod. Oh, very good. So nice to see you again. Uh, yes, it was relatively awful down there. Relatively? Relatively. Yeah, I guess it was kind of relatively awful. <laughs> well, we couldn't have it be a walk in the park for you. Why not? <laughs> I don't know. I've been to some pretty bad parks. Well, if things were easy, then, uh, well, we wouldn't need heroes, would we? Uh, I guess. All right. Well, what does what does shape of town since we left? Uh, it pretty rough. Although it seems to be no really worse than when you left. It's almost like time didn't really pass the whole time you were in there. Well, that is something to guess. All right. Uh, okay. Has anyone figured out how to uh, uncover thieves or uh, adventurers guild yet? I mean, other than brute force, <laughs> not particularly. <laughs> well, the lady okay. says, "Well." Since you have no need, more need of me, I uh, will take my leave. And she spins on a high-heeled point and walks exactly away from you down the street. Wait! Wait! Hold up! She turns her head slightly to the side. Yes? Here you go. A sweet roll for the road. She, uh... Kind of looks at it and is like, hmm, yes, sweet roll. And she turns and walk, keeps walking. Such a nice lady. Uh, yes, I'm not too sure of that, but uh, all right. 
let's just let's just go back to tavern and i think we need to uh rest and regroup all right i mean probably a good I... idea we're all newly undead <laughs> <laughs> You're un unalived. They've been realived. Alright. Yeah. So you alright, you wanna go back to the one on the other shore? So you wanna take the ferry across? Uh sure. Alright, so you head over there and you're yeah. You know, they're shocked to see you when you walk in. Like, oh uh, didn't expect to see you guys back here. Uh, yeah, we have yes. an effect on people. So, uh, how, how bad was it last night? Oh, it was an adventure. I'll be honest, I don't really remember. <laughs> last night was so long ago. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, we, we've been doing... We've been tending wounds all day, taking out the dead, those that died from their either wounds or infections or whatever, and uh, burning them in the street. We don't want we don't want anyone to rise up again. Uh, that makes Ooh, sense. Free barbecue. Nice. Uh, I don't think uh, there's that kind of a fire, uh, Poplart. Uh, barbecue. Normally, it's kind of a low temperature for a long amount of time. I'm guessing this was very, very high temperature for uh, only long enough to reduce everything to ash. So, probably not going to have a whole lot of edible out of that. You're saying they need barbecue tips. I'm saying they probably don't want you eating their cousins. Aww. But aunts and uncles are okay? Uh, and people in general, Poplar, they don't want you eating other people. It's Aww. frowned upon in most societies. Yeah, well, he also isn't a person, so he could probably get away with it. It's not technically cannibalism. Yeah. Besides, is this a bunch of waste anyway, then? Well, not really. It eventually goes back to the earth, and new things grow from earth, so it's all part of Circle of Life. It's the poo of the antelope. Apollo <laughs> just kind of taps his foot on the, uh, the cobblestone streets and goes, Doesn't seem like a lot of earth, but uh, okay, I guess. But I don't think they're going to be dumping the ashes in the streets. They'll eventually spread ashes over water or graveyard or something dump it in the you, river you people <laughs> yeah. are strange well how does uh how does very kind deal with their dead oh i mean you, you kind of saw what we turn into when we get ground up into little dust type things so uh we generally try not to touch it because it has a little bit of a radioactive residue and uh yeah we just don't deal with that uh are yeah. you saying that when your very kind dies you grind them up well i mean they kind of self-compose over a short amount of time and you know <laughs> i think he was come like this so I, I don't really want to go into it. it. You mean, you like, you know, you know, the famous one of his kind, uh, Fairy Curry? Fairy Curry? Uh, no, me never heard of Fairy Curry. Oh, Fairy Curry, yeah, did a, had a bunch of discoveries about fairy dust. And, uh, you know, I've, I've heard that the, the journals are still covered with so much dust that you, you can't touch them. They're dangerous. Oh, uh, yes. The Curry Ooh. family. I could lethalize that. <laughs> Don't you guys still have some of our remains sitting in your pouch? Ever not anymore. I, uh, I was like, you ever wonder why I'm not hanging around you as much and tend to stick around Barry? 
Yeah, uh, you might have thought it was because I had an affiliate, like, uh, affinity for him, but really it's because that whole dust thing was a little bit lethal, and yeah, it's, it's just not good. Okay, well, okay, I beg you the question. Sure, Take away. hearing fairy dust was lethal, but... Say, say you were carrying, like, an owl beak on you. I, I personally would not be offended. I mean, I don't know that owlin. Like... How should why why should I care? What do you think the odds are that Poplart has an owl beak on him that he picked up along the way? Pretty low. I mean, well, here, roll a one d one hundred. Let's find out. All right. Ninety two. Yeah, you don't have one. Ah. So like, I'm just saying, like. If you were happy to carry, like, dead parts of my kind, I personally wouldn't care. Well, they also typically aren't quite as radioactive and toxic. See, see, yeah, I, I guess that is true, but, like, it's kind of cool when you think about it that, like, your kind's dead remains become a potentially lethal weapon. I mean, I would utilize that. Who says we don't? Can I <laughs> First orc weapon was club made of orc femur. Uh, yes, this is true. Worked well <laughs> until someone found a bigger club made of log. <laughs> In fact, that's where the name Big Log comes from. Uh, First no, weapon makers of orc kind. Uh, no, <laughs> no, that is not where my name Big Log comes from. That from something uh, completely different. It just it just resemble that. Uh, second club of long ago. <laughs> Is it like your home? I, you you live in I a try. big log? Uh, no, no, uh, Poplar. Uh, don't you, don't you worry yourself about it. Uh, chances are you will never find out. Your material planers are weird. You don't know the half of it. <laughs> At least they're very flat. All right. Anyway, good sir, uh, can we trouble you for our old rooms back? What? Uh, well, I mean, there's blood on the sheets, and uh, well, there's blood on like, everything around here. Uh, you can sleep up there. You, we're gonna have to pack in though and share space as much as possible. We're, we're pretty tight at the moment. We're trying to, you know, consolidate and make a good uh, make a good fight here. So we're we're all trying to stick together. Okay, is battle still going on outside of walls? Well, it's daytime right now, but uh, we imagine when night falls, yes. All right, well, now wake us when night falls. Yep, yep, no problem. All right, me go upstairs, me go to bed, and me immediately fall into deep slumber. Cool. Uh, I think it was worth it. Yeah, th why not? Let's let's roll for everything. Roll a 1d20. Let's see how deep your slumber is. Oh, not deep at all. You get four. Wow. Yeah, it, it is not deep at all. You wake up in a couple hours and you go back to sleep. You keep thinking, I'm, I'm supposed to be asleep. I'm supposed to be sleeping deep. What the heck? Ah, he's having one of those, like, hangover sleeps where you wake up every one to two hours and keep going, I need to sleep. And you never can. It's probably because that mirror keeps uh, babbling at night. Yes. I was imagining yes, that you left it down does. in the parlor and uh, Poplar just stayed up having a conversation with it. <laughs> I like that. You leave it down there. You, every now and then, pop art, you just like get distracted by something else going on, like someone a sweet roll delivery or something, and then you hear in the background it talking to someone, and it's like, oh, on the ash rain falls, the assassins of the stones face betrayal and the advancement of machines. 
I'm also imagining that when Barry wakes up in the morning, there'll be smears all over the mirror from Poplar trying to feed it sweet rolls. Uh, I, I imagine like uh, me was trying to sleep during day because we got there at daylight, didn't we? Yes, you were. It is. It, yeah, you told them to wake you up at night. So, yeah, you were sleeping through the evening. OK. So, yeah, so me wake up. Did anyone else go to sleep? Uh, Yeah, I'm not an idiot. Fuck I stuff. am. Yes. All right. So at least three of us slept. Did Poplar sleep at all? Of course. But fairy sleep, you know, which is like um, elf sleep, you know, like like with Santa Claus. No, oh, okay. Yeah. Poplar probably just fell asleep leaning against the mirror using the incessant mumblings of insanity as like a nice little, what would it be? Kind of like a white noise soothing effect. <laughs> that sounds about right. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> All right, so me groggily get up after not really good sleep. All right, yeah. Dumble on You're, down. You awaken right as the sun is beginning to set, and you stumble down. You can see the there's a lot of hustle and bustle as panic is in the air. They're expecting, you know, something to happen tonight, and they're not sure what. All right. Uh, hey, Mirror. Is there any way we can defeat this uh, uh, wave of uh, horror? Hmm. After radiant moonrise, a broken heart shall mark the end time of peace and support the return of the resistance. You have to break someone's heart? I can do that. Achy breaky heart? I don't think I understand. Uh, me not to understand either. Well, maybe we go out and we break, uh, evil creatures' hearts. What, we all invite them on a first date and then dump them? Oh, that could work. I mean, I'm about to try anything, I guess. Especially if we get to break someone's heart. <laughs> that is an evil I have not attempted yet. Oh, good lord. Alright, anyway. Uh, be be kind of shake head at this, and then me just kind of head out to wall. Alright. You head out to the wall, and you there's several people running around, you know, setting up fortifications, fallback points, various things along the way. And you get there, and you t find two guards standing, looking out. Like, oh! Oh, good. You guys. Uh, yeah, I, I really gotta go. Can you watch this post for a bit? Uh, yeah, me can try. I'm an expert watchman. Oh, perfect, perfect. So the one guy goes running, and he runs straight into an outhouse. Apparently he'd been holding it a while. He really had to go. And the other guy just kind of laughs and is like, Yep, yep, uh, I've been here all morning. Well, if he's going to be out in a minute and you're covering, I got to go to the inn and I got to rest for a few minutes. Thanks, guys. Hi. Okay. Not I'm a pleasure. In the castle. All right. So you guys are standing there, and the the sun is fully set, and the moon begins to rise. And I guess make some perception checks. Ugh. Uh, Grimmel gets a 14. Poplar, uh, nat ones. Me get three. Nice. What was Foxglove? 18. 
Nice. All right, well, Poplar, you, for some reason, are just fascinated with something in the opposite direction and notice nothing whatsoever. But Foxglove, you, your eyes are sharpened. You see a shadowy figure silhouetted by moonlight walking towards you with a small group behind it. They look tiny at this distance, but you definitely can tell that is a a woman walking with a long flowing robe. Cool. I'm gonna alert the party about this. Do we have to break her heart? Uh maybe. All right, what do you see, Foxglove? I relay the information. Oh, okay. Uh, scary lady with long flowing robe. Uh, can we make out details yet? What does her face look like? Uh, you squint and study, and it's almost like it it shifts like there was a shadow and then it comes back to to focus as a kind of intense looking uh woman in uh what at first you thought was a fully flowing robe like tightens up into a form-fitting outfit with just barely a drape of uh, cloth behind that even gets sucked up into the outfit like it's a tail on a coat, but it's really more like a skirt. Okay. Uh. Hey, Foxglove, what does your uh, what does your evil mask uh, make of this creature? I don't know. This is a creature. Uh, I don't know. Do, are you being prejudiced against me because I have the evil mask? Is that it? Well, maybe your evil mask recognizes another demon or devil. This is a valid question. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, semi-racist. No, Barry, not all demons know each other. Yeah, exactly. Oh my god. Do you want to roll for some insight? Just to see if you can, like, get anything out of it? Like, roll a religion check. Five. Yep, nothing. You're like, nope. Nothing whatsoever. Alright. Uh... Hey, uh, Poplart. Huh? Yeah? Uh, can you, uh, can you, is it only yourself that you can shrink down, or can you shrink down something else? I mean, pretty much anything. Watch this. Takes a sweet roll and makes it big. I never I... dreamed about doing this before. Uh... Why am I so stupid sometimes? <laughs> <laughs> uh, just uh, sometimes. What are you insinuating, big log? <laughs> uh, nothing, 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 popular. Uh, uh, me surprised you can uh, uh, pronounce uh, insinuating. It has more than two syllables. I am a quite loquacious small little elf. If you have, uh, have you know. My vocabularium is very robusty. <laughs> I can tell. All right. Anyway, uh, can you like take uh, like something big, make it small, and then like put a timer on it so that it becomes big again after a certain amount of time? Um, maybe. But what is this timer thing you're speaking of? Well, me thinking you can, you know. 
uh, shrink down a big boulder. Uh, and me can throw a small rock. You know, shrink down big boulder into small rock. Me can throw a small rock at uh, creatures coming towards us, and then it turns into big boulder again and squishes them. Ah. Uh. How far away is this lady right now? I'll like squints his eyes because he's really imperceptive. Uh, pretty far out. Uh, I mean, I was thinking twice normal vision to start. That's why only Foxglove picked it up. And then maybe you guys have talked long enough. You know, that's when Barry could get kind of a a vision, like a little bit of a, a sight of what they look like. And say now they're. Oh, 90 feet. Uh, so, Barry, you think you could throw a rock 90 feet? Ah, uh, one second. I'll probably grumbles. Ne Shrinks himself down. And then just... Says, Barry, lift your hand. Okay, me lift hand. A blight sits in it, says. Row me. All right. He's still, like, uh, he's still holding a giant sweet roll while he's, you're telling him this. Oh, the sweet roll shrunk back down. He, he can only maintain concentration on one thing at a time. Oh, okay. Because that would have been hilarious. You make a sweet roll big, then yourself small. It would be <laughs> awesome if I could, but unfortunately, I yeah, it's a concentration cantrip. So, yeah, you can only uh, do one thing at a time. That'd be funny, and then Bob Lark can actually live in a sweet roll home. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we get so a, tiny Pop Lark. If we get a baker to bake a big enough one, where he can just walk in, like enlarge it, then burrow inside, it's a possibility. Yes, yes, it is. Just wear it like a barrel. All right. Uh, me, yeah, me toss tiny Pop Lark at group of figures coming. Um, okay. Let's go with a athletics on this one. Okay. Ooh, that's great. Um, 13. It's all right. I mean, you... Right, we can combine here. with Poplart's wings to angle his flight. Yeah, so Poplart, give me... Because you're being tossed, so you you lose a little bit of control. So why don't you also give me a athletics check on this one? Oh, athletics? Oh, <laughs> that's a four. I was thinking more <laughs> acrobatics. <laughs> well, acrobatics wouldn't be a problem. Well, I just okay, fine. Acrobatics. What do we got? Ah, uh, in that case, seventeen. All right, so I'm going to give the leader an opportunity to have a reaction here. And that reaction is they see you coming because of that combination, and they have the ability to attempt a hit at you. So I'm going to roll for that. Oh, nat 20. Not what I expected. I don't um, know why. You always roll high. No, I, I I was just hoping for a standard hit. I, I was not, not hoping for a nat 20. Um, okay. So, Poplar, you're flying in, and you get to the last, like, <clears throat> 10 feet, and then all of a sudden, this, like, whip of hair comes flying around... And slaps into you, and in a, as a combination of you're moving towards it, and it's swinging. Oh, you take 23 slashing damage as the hair is just cut into your flesh, and you get knocked to the ground. And roll. Ouch. Hey, yeah, you're, you're prone I'm, for the moment. Now I'm surrounded by all these minions and the lady, right? 
Right, you're not surrounded, you're in front of them. Poplar staggered to his feet. Okay. Have a conversation. Like, so you you stagger up, and if she did not appear to break stride. She simply slapped you down and kept moving. So you are now like face to face. Like, that was not nice. Poplar turns around, winks at Barry, and then poofs out of existence. And okay. everyone, everything within a is it ten foot radius of him takes twenty four force damage. Okay. And Poplar pops back into existence next to Barry, smelling of partially burnt brownies, holding his arm like, <laughs> "Told you it would work." No. Uh, uh... Me, sorry there, Poplar. That looked like that hurt. Yeah. 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 Poplar just sits down <laughs> behind the wall. Going, Ow. <laughs> yeah. That... I, I, I don't I don't blame you. That is uh, that is kind of funny, though. All right, so you do that, and she gets blasted, and you hear this just unearthly scream from over the wall. And then you look, and they all kind of right themselves and continue walking towards you. Well, Barry, I think you should break her heart. Ask her on a, a date. Breaky, breaky heart. I mean, you are a paladin of Freya. <laughs> Show her why they call me Big Blog? Yeah, and then smash her heart into pieces. <laughs> Figuratively or literally, I mean, both work. <laughs> um, hmm, well, uh... Me not sure if this is, you know... Uh, uh, we can try. So uh, you, you, the other three of you might want to look away for this. Oh, gladly. And Grimmel closes his eyes tight and like puts his hands over his hollow ears. <laughs> Uplight's already sitting on this little rampart area, hidden away, eating a nibble, nibbling on a sweet roll. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming Fox Club looks away. All right. Uh, uh. All right. The me can't believe me doing this. All right. Uh, me jump up onto wall. Uh, throw surcoat surcoat back over shoulder. Uh, pull down breeches. Uh, show her why they call me Big Log and say, "You can never have this." And then pull back pants and. Pull pants back up and jump down behind wall. Not exactly what I was thinking, but um. Yeah, me neither. Can I get a performance <laughs> check on that? Emotional damage. I guess uh, quickie works too. <laughs> I don't know what you were expecting from me. All right, performance. <laughs> oh God, no, that's not good. Uh, it's only a seven. Oh, you flashed her for nothing. <laughs> you should have yelled that you were a grower, not a shower. Uh, no, me very definitely shower. Uh, but maybe, <laughs> maybe she just... Maybe she's like go. had sex with dragons before. You never stood a chance. <laughs> uh, no, maybe, you know, she, like most women, and, you know, a dick pic just does not uh, impress her. Yes. She, she, you, you think you hear, yeah. <laughs> Dick prick. <laughs> maybe she's a lesbian. <laughs> yeah, anything possible. Then maybe uh, Foxglove can uh, break her heart. I hear that's a real turnoff for guys. <laughs> White someone being a lesbian. 
<laughs> yeah, you, it's harder to attract guys if you're a lesbian. Uh, Most was... lesbians don't care if they attract guys, so yeah, it all works out. I, I know, it was on Twitter, formerly known as X. Someone <laughs> posted something really stupid. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. I refuse to call it X, by the way. That's why I said formerly. He's gonna give it to you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Anyway, so apparently that's have no effect on her. They've tried nothing, and nothing's working. <laughs> well, uh, me not think that magic mirror is playing with full deck anyway. It plays cards? Uh, yes, but not well, because it has no hands. Ah. It makes so much sense. I know. Oh my god. All right. I'm assuming they are getting closer and closer. Yes, they're walking right towards you. They I walk have an right idea up to, to give all of you guys an advantage. I'm gonna walk over. How far away are they? Just uh, sure. Now they're within like 30 feet of the okay, um, fine. The wall. Um, I don't have to walk, but um, I'm gonna cast enthrall. Hey, Uplar gives you a thumbs up beforehand and gives you a bonus 1d4 to your skill checks. Wow, oh, that's helpful. So attack, spell, cast. That is a 24. I guess if we want to roll the 1d4 to add on, we can. I don't think it's necessary at this point. Yeah. So creatures of my choice who can hear me make a wisdom saving throw at advantage when in combat. Like. What? What is this? Let me, let me, my notes was not explained enough. Basically, let me, let me make sure I know how this works. <laughs> It sounds like they must make a saving throw or have to do what she, what Grimmel tells them. Yep, no. I will make a wisdom saving throw. Any creature that can't be charmed succeeds. Uh, on a failed save, the target has disadvantage on perception checks made to perceive any creature other than me. So basically, they have disadvantage noticing anybody else. Like, for instance, my party members. Okay, gotcha. Uh, they have to be a 17. Uh, they fail. Okay, cool. So they only see me. Okay. At least they have disadvantage on noticing the every anybody else. All right. Well, you got it. They are focused on you. All right. Go, guys. Go. Uh, how tall is Wall? Oh, it's just a standard, let's call it like a 12-footer. Okay. All right. Uh, they are not right at base of wall, are they? Uh, they are 30 feet out currently and walking towards you, walking towards the gate that you know, you're at. All right. Well, first of all, me... Uh... uh... Me throw, me throw me spear at, uh, lead wench. Lead wench. Oh, lead wench. All right, you, so first, when you go to do that, you notice that her appearance has changed. She looks almost, uh, more, like, more beautiful, more attractive than you expected. Like, almost like a your ideal human orc, like, you know, a humanoid orc type of thing. Orc? Uh, all right. Uh, well, I guess that make me pause a little bit. Let me open up divine sense. Uh, do me sense evil coming from her? You do. All right. Did me not care? Uh, me then hurl spear. All right. You 
give that spear a hurl. Uh, it would be really nice if me can roll uh, into a double digits. Uh, but that is uh, 18 to hit anyway. Well, that, that does hit, actually. Okay. All right. 1d8 plus 4. Uh, so that's eight eight piercing damage. All right. As the your spear enters her, the illusion falls away, and you see this just mass of pale, like rotted flesh sticking to the you know sticking barely to bone. And she gives you just this nasty, like, hiss of a look. Ah. Uh, and answer me, draw a sword of Freya and show her Freya's holy symbol. Is it your big log? <laughs> uh, no, she already saw that. She was uh, not too impressed. I was just making a joke. <laughs> Uh, all right, you pull it out, and we'll check. Yeah, she turns away, like, horrified, maybe by you, maybe by the symbol, maybe, who knows. But she just kind of hisses and stops her progression and moves back. All right. All what right. does well hold on one sec i'm gonna make sure that i as we're doing this i put everyone in the list here for things occurring so she was at the top and then the next guys that are down uh All right, so the two on the side, like, line up, and, you know, I'm just going to roll real quick. Dang it. All right. And... Uh, you see a bolt blast from their hands at you. Uh, the first one is a... Oh, man. The best one is a 14 to hit. Uh, nope, that misses. That misses you. And then the next one tries to do the same. Uh, for th another So another miss, and then a 24 to hit. Uh, that one does hit. All right, that one. Target must succeed. I need you to I believe make a constitution saving throw. Yeah. All right. Uh... Okay, well, um... Uh, me is immune to disease. If that uh, makes it's any it's it's not disease. So, I just yeah. Oh, me roll that one because me oh, can't roll no. good right now. I know. All right. Well, um, so normally that was going to be just a ten necrotic damage hit. But with a nat one on the constitution save, I think it doubles it. Um, it really just burns into you. All right. Well, opposite of holy energy, I guess. Yeah, exactly. And the uh, the last guy comes up. And where's my other? There it is. Six and seven. And he completely, completely misses you. 
Well, that's good because good God. Well, they, yeah, I only, I have to roll particularly high to actually hit you, and you're the only one down here. Well, me still up on wall. Or you're the only one close enough. How about that? Everyone yeah, else how about that? Out of the way. We should all be focused on Foxglove. Uh, the one lady was focused on Foxglove, but then Barry. You mean Grimmel? With a, uh, yeah, Grimmel. Grimmel. But then Barry struck her with a uh, spear and got her attention. Yeah, so they're basically all out of it now. Or, I mean, I guess they technically just have disadvantage. They have, they have advantage on making the wisdom save again. Okay, so what? I need to make another wisdom save? I think so. All right. Sure. Uh, that one. Yeah, so uh, the, I guess everyone but the main lady fails. Okay, she got so... so. Yeah, so main lady is not enthralled anymore, but the rest of the goons are. So technically they shouldn't have been able to hit Barry, but... Mm. Well, it was... Yeah, I guess just that one. Well, whatever. It was a lucky uh, shot. Yeah, a lu lucky. One lucky shot. It was a nat 20, so that's how it's justified. Ah, uh, that's it's fair. been mm -hmm. second nat 20 of the game. It happens. <laughs> and for you, maybe. Not so much for us. <laughs> All right. well, we get we get nat ones. Anyway, well, it is right. how we roll. It is how we roll. <laughs> well, all right. So I need either, I guess, to know if Poplard or Foxglove are going to do anything. Uh, guessing Poplards is kind of how, how big of a space are we working with here in this little lookout area? Well, I thought you guys were down below, and only Barry was up on the wall. Oh, Poplar popped back up to Barry. Oh, Again, well then... Thrown. I don't know, you guys are at least a five-foot square. I was thinking, like, Poplar crawling along the ground and then popping up randomly. Give little sneak shots, like pop shots. Like, ha -ha! Well, it would make sense. You imagine there are battlements here. Yeah, go for it. All right. Like crawls to a random area. He pops up and he does a shot at the lady for 25 to hit. That hits. All right. And he slaps her with. Uh, hold on. 27 damage. Ow. Jeez. Goes, Ow. Ah! And pops his head back down behind the wall. He got her right in a vulnerable spot. Says, Teach yeah. that stupid lady for whipping me with her hair. Stupid. Stupid hair. Stupid. All right. Well, what about uh, Foxglove? Um, which enemy is closest to me? Well, they're all, you're all kind of up on wall. We're all up on wall, and then they're down below on the other side of wall. I can't really do much then, because I only got melee. Then jump down off wall. Uh, no, probably don't want to do that just yet. It's better to stay in, you know, we have the high ground right now. Uh, me told that is good tactic to hold high ground. Well, I can give someone bardic inspiration, I suppose, and play some epic battle music for us. Oh, there you go. Alright, who wants the bardic inspiration? Uh, maybe Poplar. 21 to cast. I vote, I vote Barry. Now, I, I'm kind of a melee person myself, so uh, you're the one that has the good ranged attacks. Don't you have any, like, holy smitage you can do? 
Well, yes, if I jump down off a wall. Alright, fine. You can give me give me thing and I will All I will right. one D oh, I get an extra one D ten? Yes. That is awesome. That is ridiculous. It's a pretty good music. Yes. That is like epic music. Yeah. It's just like John Williams uh, epic music. I was thinking Hans John Zimmer, Williams. but sure. Isn't it? Isn't it Willie? Or is it who's who does Star Wars and Raiders of the Lost? Yeah, that's John Williams. Okay. Yeah, that's John Williams. Cool. But Hans Zimmer just won for the last Dune movie. Oh well, I have not seen either Dune movie yet. So. Well, I think the director was like, "Okay, we don't need anything too intense. We just have people walking into a room," and Zimmer's like, "I got this," and just writes this like ridiculously epic like piano burning masterpiece. Oh, that sounds like fun. All right. Okay, so now I have Bardic Inspiration, which will help considering I can't roll past a seven right now. All right. Well, I guess, uh, let's see. Well, if we're there, let's go back to the top. So the it's the lady first. She's, let's see, if she's looking up at you, and she sends out oh yeah she sends out her long hair to try and grab you and pull you down that'll be fun uh let's see six that's a 15 to hit on the first attempt uh no it does not hit uh 16 on the second and then nope. oh yeah so she fails completely and morphs her appearance, uses a bonus action to morph her appearance into something just even more horrible and disgusting. Just a, a total, like, rotted demon face that she's looking up at you. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Yep. And then the, uh, the other guy that's standing there, he looks for... He's he's looking for Grimmel, trying to trying to figure out if can can Grimmel be seen? Yes, I'm the only thing they can see. Yeah, well, I just didn't want to make sure you were in a spot that they could see you. So, he's going to make an attempt to hit you with a mat bit of magic, and he nat ones. Oh, oh. so. Sounds yeah. I'm thinking he's going to do... Let's see. He's going to blast his buddy for... Let's see. What is this? One, three... Oh, man. He hits his buddy for ten. All right, Barry, go for it. Okay, uh, one second. Me, uh, me gearing up for something epic here. All right. Well, while you're doing that, since those other two guys that are going to go after you are going to be also focused on Grimmel, I'll roll them out. Man, they are both okay. That guy misses completely, and the other one takes a shot for. 17 to hit? Yeah, it hits. Finally. Oh my god. It's ridiculous. Oh yes, you poor thing. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. Ben is competitive as well. So that's 8 necrotic damage. And I need you to make a constitution saving throw. Word of advice, don't nat one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ah, roll that crack. Ah. Ah, ah, ah. Uh, Eleven. Mm -hmm. Uh, that fails. Uh, great. Yep. At least it's not a nat it's one. A... Yeah, that would have been... That would have been really, really bad. Um... Yeah, you just feel a little extra burn for two damage. 
That's not so bad. All right, Barry, did you figure out your epicness? Yes. Uh, me jump down off wall uh, with Freya, sort of Freya in hand, uh, and me do a mighty, mighty epic swing at uh, Ugly Chicken Lead. Uh, and me going to using smite on top of everything. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, let's just, just see what the extra 1d10 does. Okay. So, uh, let's see here. So that is... That is uh, 33 to hit. All right. I'm, I'm assuming that hits. Oh, yes. Yes. Okay. I think that, that would have hit one of the devils even all the way down next to Lucifer. <laughs> all right. Uh, so. Right. So this so is she is she undead or a fiend? Yes. Okay. So I gotta I gotta do some math some some rolling and some maths here. This is this is all gonna kinda stack up. Yeah, I I get that. I mean do you wanna short do you wanna shorthand this? Because you're gonna split her in twain. Uh, well, I don't know. My 1d8s weren't all that impressive. You were... <laughs> okay. I, I'm just saying that, that this is going to be massive. Okay. Well, not as massive as you would think. Um, so, that is actually... Seven. That's only that's only twenty one damage. Um, yeah, she was already injured to start with. Okay. Yeah, you and you were jumping down on her. You you hit her, and you like crushed her skull in, and like, split her in half. Ah, uh, Ray! Ah. Uh, uh. All right. Well, that was that was uh, swing for ages, and me have another attack. So me going to uh, turn to uh, closest henchman and level swing at him. Just normal attack, though. Okay. Uh, um, bardic inspiration. That's much better. All right. Uh, Fourteen plus twelve is uh, twenty-six to hit. Yeah, yeah, you you hit it. That, that is yes, yes, yes. Uh, that is seventeen damage. Yeah, so this one, I'm just gonna grab one of them randomly, and we'll just say you cut him down too. <laughs> okay, all right. Two down, all two right. to go. Grimmel, it is you. All right. Well, I'm gonna maintain concentration on this spell, just cause. Okay. Oh, actually, I did not do well in that wisdom check. Um, 11. I believe that fails, right? Yeah. Uh, concentration no, you just have to... 10 past 10. 10 past 10. Yeah, I realized that after I said it. So, yeah, you're good. Oh, okay. Well, they may be enthralled on me, but only me. So that means... Bruce, go get him! I command Bruce to, like, I guess jump down off the wall and on top of one of their... One of their heads. <laughs> okay. He lands on their head. You. What do you want him to do? Attack! Fight for my honor, my glory! Um. <laughs> okay. So, so he sticks. He sticks his tongue in one of their ears. I mean that works. Anything, Bruce. Anything. Uh, 
I mean, his his main thing is he just kind of hypnotizes, and he can't really do that. Uh, it licks one of their eyes. I mean, he's got he's got like physical abilities. I believe in you, Bruce. Your physical strength, you can do it. He has a strength of one. It's minus five <laughs> on the thing. Um, you can do a minimum you know, of one damage. Maybe, maybe he just crawls inside the guy's shirt <laughs> and tries to tickle him. Yeah, I mean, that works. Anything, Bruce, anything. Uh, hold on one sec. Let me let me look at something. He crawled down his pants. <laughs> uh, then hold he on. felt nuts. Ah. He, uh... Let's let's step back for just one sec. When you when you order him to go, you spit on his crown. Okay. Well, because his crown glows in the when it's wet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it jumps down, and the guy's focused on you, but Bruce blinds him, so he's got disadvantage to hit you. All right. How about that? Sure. We basically nerfed the one guy. Yeah. <laughs> Good job, Bruce. <laughs> All right, Bruce Poplar. the trooper. A warrior. Poplar's liking the idea of war god Barry right now. So Poplar just kind of peeks over the battlements and wiggles his fingers and does enlarge on Barry to make Barry a 12-foot tall towering orc now with a glowing sword. Okay. And Barry gets an extra 1d4 on damage to his attacks. Oh, nice. Sounds good to me. Foxglove? I just blanked. What? It's your turn. What do you do? Oh. Are they still... There's only a couple of the small the guys. Yes. Yeah, you guys are still up on the wall. I'm down in between them. I killed two, and uh, Bruce has blinded one. And uh, so, yeah. I'm now 12 foot tall. Nice. Because, you know, Poplar can be big, big. I'm going to just continue playing some dope battle music as a form of encouragement. Should I roll for performance to see how epic this battle music is? I, I would love that. Seventeen. That's pretty epic. I mean, yeah. not your best work, but it's it's pretty good. Uh, me like it's it's got a real good beat to it i fumbled a couple of the riffs but it works overall yeah but you're like you're like playing the strings and pounding it you know some of the better like like some of the better david arkenstone stuff no one irish musician never mind yeah no uh me me not uh me not know irish folk music that well I know Dragon Force. All right. Well, so we're back up to those. My two guys. And one of them is at complete disadvantage, but forced to be focused on Grimmel. And that is a 11 to hit from him. Does not hit. Yep. And then he tries again for a nine to hit. So misses. Yep. <laughs> Yep. All right. So then the one that's not blind will lick a shot at you. And that one is a 18 to hit. That does hit. That one hits. All right. So that is a nine necrotic damage. I need you to make that constitution check or save. Eight. Eight, okay. So you take an additional two necrotic. Alright. Alright, they're done. Barry, I mean Big Barry. Uh, oh, right. Double Big Log. Uh, yes, me. Uh, extra me, log. Take, me take Mighty Swing at a uh, creature that just hurt Grimmel. Alright. Uh, which is 11 plus 6 is 17 uh, plus 1 to 4 12. that's 29 to hit 
79. Yeah, well, that hits, and then damage me up. All right, damage. That is uh, 9 plus 4. That's 13. Uh, 13 plus 7 is 20. Yeah, so you basically, in your enlarged form, you're swinging your sword more like a golf club. And, I mean, it just... Yeah, you, you, you come right up to the guy and just, like, cut his leg clean off, and he just falls to the ground dead. Oh, okay. He doesn't even say, tis but a flesh wound? Uh, he can't speak. <laughs> All right. Yeah, like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, me tell, uh, Bruce, hop off. Watch, get out of the way, Bruce. And then me swing it last, last thing. All right. Uh, that is a nat 20. Okay. I so, guess I can't make any fun of you. I can't make fun of you anymore for your nat 20s. No, and um, and Bruce dirty 20s his jump away. So he, yeah. like, leaps off as you come through and you just, like, cut the guy completely in half. Yes, yeah, so being a big berry uh, does have some advantages, apparently. <laughs> big bear be quite good. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, you slayed them, and uh, that all finishes up, and then the you hear from behind you, like, Whoa, what What happened? Jeez, I had to just go to the bathroom for a minute. What the heck? That's a, been oh, okay. a little longer than a minute, dude. <laughs> I, what, what, what do you mean? That was only like, what, three rounds? It's like 18 seconds. <laughs> uh, uh, we, we good at killing bad people. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes, no. <laughs> Awesome. He's like, whoa, whoa, uh, good, good job. Um, uh, I'll, I'll be on watch. Uh, thank you, thank you. And, um, well, I guess uh, you, as you guys regroup and Barry, you shrink back down because I believe that effect only lasts for a minute. Yeah, so, well, unless first, I keep uh, recasting it. But I'm not going to uh, keep recasting it. Yeah, me, uh, before me shrink down, uh, me, uh, use 12 foot, uh, tall my, myself to, uh, grab hold of wall and kind of scramble up and over to, you know, get back on right side of wall. Oh, oh, okay. Could have just, like, gotten normal sized and walked through the gate, but yeah, that works. Um, <laughs> guessing gate it's is not as dramatic. Yeah, it's fair. All right, it's not as dramatic. All right, so you do that, and we just, uh, as you guys kind of congratulate each other for a job well done. We tip the camera up to the night sky and fade to black. All right. That that was a that was a uh, very crazy fun episode, I got to say. Oh good. I'm glad. I I was not sure what to do when I started. I was just at a loss. <laughs> I, I thought we were going to end up in some pastoral scene in the painting and then, you know, somebody say something stupid and get expelled right back to where we came. So uh, me, meeting Loki was definitely not something I was expecting. <laughs> Good. Man, I got to keep you on your toes. You say what? I got to keep you on your toes. That's true. That is true. Barry is the only one cheating death. Well, yeah. right. You're welcome. You're welcome, really. This has been an Azentuary LLC production. Find us online at A-Z-E-N-T-U-A-R-Y dot com for character bios, merchandise, Patreon, and more. Thank you for listening.